Jaguar's F-Pace has always brought a well-judged compromise of class, performance and capability to the luxury mid-sized SUV segment. This much improved version further enhances its proposition with mild hybrid engine electrification plus a plug-in model, along with more sophisticated media connectivity and a far smarter cabin. It's now the car it always should have been, and if you're shopping in the segment for mid-sized premium badge SUVs, it offers a refreshing, arguably more dynamic and very Jaguar-like alternative to key rivals. Is this F-Pace really the sports car of SUVs? Well, perhaps. Jaguar certainly knows a thing or two about ride and handling, and its Land Rover connections have given it plenty of understanding on the subject of four-wheel drive too. Plus, of course, the company has had an awful long time to stand back and look at the market and then come up with something better. This F-Pace does, after all, date back only as far as 2017. And if you've not tried one before, on paper, it looks as if it might well be rather good. The low-slung looks matched by equally sophisticated aluminium underpinnings. Unlike the smaller E-Pace, this isn't just a Jaguar body slung on top of Land Rover running gear. Instead, the F-Pace uses the IQAL chassis from the company's much-admired XE and XF saloons. But with this revised model, that's been matched with a revitalised range of electrified engines, most of them featuring the company's latest MHEV mild hybrid system and all driving through a smooth-shifting ZF 8-speed auto gearbox. The two main diesel variants that most customers choose, the D165 and D200 derivatives, have the MHEV setup, as do the two six-cylinder models, the D300 diesel and the potent P400 petrol. Jaguar also offers a couple of non-hybrid petrol models, the mid-range P250 and, at the top of the range, the 550 PS V8-powered SVR variant. Here, though, we've chosen to try a variant new to this revised lineup, the P400e plug-in hybrid. This makes a 2-litre petrol turbo unit with a 143 PS electric motor powered by a rear-mounted 17.1 kWh battery that, when fully charged, can facilitate a 33-mile all-electric driving range. In theory, this model can deliver a three-figure fuel return, but in practice, its WLTP combined cycle economy reading would probably be quite similar to that of the more conventional volume MHEV D200 diesel, which, for reference, is 44.7 mpg. The P400e's 50 gram per kilometre CO2 reading will, though, do a great deal more for your tax return than the D200's 166 gram per kilometre showing. This PHEV model is a fair bit heavier than the conventional versions, though, which better showcase the fluid, rather agile and mildly engaging drive dynamics that have always marked out this F-Pace from its German rivals. It rides beautifully, especially with optional adaptive dynamics, adaptive damping fitting. And there's even a degree of off-piste prowess, thanks to the four-wheel drive system's integrated IDD, or Intelligent Driveline Dynamics, control system, which, when you're off-piste, is continuously estimating not only the friction between the tyres and the surface, but also how much of the available grip is being exploited at each wheel. So, an F-Pace works just about everywhere, from farm trails to the frantic morning commute. It certainly isn't perfect, especially in this expensive plug-in form, but you might well think it's closer to being the perfect compromise in this segment than any other rival. It says much that Jaguar likes to market this F-Pace as the sports car of SUVs. And not much has changed with this package of exterior updates, or at least you might think that, until you take a closer look. So let's do that and start up front. Now there's a sculpted new bonnet with a wider power bulge, that bonnet extending flush to the very top of the grille surround, eliminating the rather ugly shut line that previously ran across the nose. It flows into a larger, completely redesigned, heritage-inspired monogrammed mesh grille with diamond detailing and the classic Jaguar growler badge. There are fewer changes in profile, though these side vents do now feature the iconic Jaguar Leaper. At the rear, the tail lights, originally inspired by the F-Type sports car, now have more in common with the I-Pace EV, featuring Jaguar's chicane illuminating graphic. 
Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. Around 80% of the body is fashioned from lightweight aluminium, and some of it, the cross chassis rail, for example, even uses high-tech magnesium. So, subtle evolution outside. Will the same be true of the cabin? Actually, no. Unusually for a mid-term facelift, almost everything here has been fundamentally redesigned and is all the better for it. The focal point is this new and much more sophisticated 11.4-inch curved PIVI Pro central touchscreen. But there's also much else to catch the eye in an interior that feels very Jaguar, with an ambience completely different to that you'll find in German rivals. There's lots to take in if you happen to be used to the original model. Things like the sleeker vents, the dished three-spoke wheel, and the more tactile gear lever replacing the rising rotary dial used before. Surrounding it all, authentic finishes feature in beautifully formed shapes, reinvigorating Jaguar's rich lineage of luxury interiors. Upper spec models also get this 12.3 inch configurable instrument screen, and we particularly like the wider cushioned leather trimmed seats. Storage space is much improved thanks to this lower centre console, redesigned with this sliding section at the top and an open lower aperture at the bottom. And lovely touches are plentiful. The lovely cool zinc alloy gear shift paddles, the cricket ball style stitching on the gear lever, the split rim steering wheel and, if you opt for the Meridian audio system upgrade, these brushed metal laser etched lacquered silver speaker frets. Time to take a seat in the rear. Once installed, two tall adults get more headroom than you might expect the raked back roof line to be able to provide. And there's reasonable standards of knee room too. Now, let's have a look at the boot, accessed on almost all models via this powered tailgate. It rises to reveal one of the larger luggage compartments in the mid-sized SUV segment. The dry load space capacity for mainstream models rated at 601 litres, enough for up to eight carry-on suitcases. As you might be able to tell from this curiously sloped entry section to the load bay floor of this plug-in hybrid variant, we haven't got anything like that here, thanks to the battery pack which must lie beneath the base of the cargo area. Dry capacity in this case falls to 485 litres. With all three rear seat segment portions dropped down, the floor isn't quite flat, but the 1,428 litre dry cargo capacity provided is reasonably sized for this class of car. That falls to 1,299 litres for this plug-in variant. The F-Pace has been well received, and with good reason. Look at it, drive it and analyse it and you feel you've a product born out of generations of development. It's hard to believe this was Jaguar's very first stab at the SUV segment. The brand's decision to stay true to its principles has helped enormously here. This could have been merely a rebadged Range Rover Velar or simply a clone of the rival German models already well established in this market. Instead, the F-Pace has its own identity. Thanks to the sophisticated aluminium chassis, there's a very Jaguar-like feel to the way this car rides and handles that you don't get from the smaller E-Pace or from many rivals come to that. But this car still weighs a touch more than it should and that eats away all the advantages gained from this revised model's clever mild hybrid tech. In the mainstream MHEV diesel forms most will choose, it's no more frugal or efficient than its unelectrified German competitors, which is a touch disappointing given all the effort the Jaguar engineers have gone to here. And if you want petrol power on a reasonable budget, as an increasing number of customers might, the unelectrified mainstream P250 variant can't meet the prevailing class standard. An obvious answer if you really prioritise efficiency is to choose the P400E petrol plug-in version we've tried for this test. But this model is expensive and even heavier. If you can afford it though, it's an undeniably appealing confection. Especially if you can specify an embellished version of this model line's much improved cabin 
which across the lineup is now deeply desirable with the cutting edge media connectivity that's long been lacking from Jaguars of this size. And in summary, well, this F-Pace remains one of the standout contenders in this corner of the SUV market. No small achievement when you look at the quality of the competition. True, it might not be as rough road ready as a Land Rover product or as track tailored as a Porsche Macan, but most buyers in this segment, though, don't want a mid-sized luxury SUV at either of those two extremes. They want a car like this, a sporting SUV to savour.